Hey guys, my name is Ryan and welcome to Overwatch Central. Today we're going to do another top 5 tips video, this time covering Junkrat. Now it comes as no surprise that with the changes Junkrat received, he's a lot more popular now, but we still see some kind of big mistakes on actually playing this hero and how to utilise him properly. So in this video, I wanted to speak to pro like Crow to get some solid tips, but also to understand why these tips are important. Let's get straight into the video, but first let me know what other heroes you would like us to cover in this fashion and who you would like us to talk to. Anyway, let's get going. So, Junkrat is a very popular hero currently at the moment. The first tip should really be the one that narrows down Junkrat's role and basically says to people, yeah, you can do a lot more, but don't forget what you're in a team for. Yeah, yeah I, I completely agree. Um, well, Junkrat did get a lot of more options available to himself with the, the recent buffs. Uh, I think still understanding what Junkrat's role traditionally was. Uh, and traditionally speaking, uh, Junkrat really excels at like holding down a flank or holding down a slide and then still assisting the main part of combat. Uh, so a constant thing that I've always told my my viewers and whatnot is I always try to uh, pick a side and then cleave towards the center. And Junkrat, what, do you, what you wanna do, either you can trap or concussive mine, whichever, you, you know, however you see fit, you make sure one side is safe, or at least usually the, the closed in flank. Uh, from there, once you, you know, uh, made one side of combat safe, now you can assist with your no fall off damage towards mid. As an example, I think King's Row is a really popular map for Junkrat on defense. What kind of side would you try and hold? Would you hold the hotel, for example, or would you try and hold main as well? Like, what would your plans be? How would this work in actual practice? Actual practice, King's Row. First of all, King's Row, incredibly great map, and first point defense is incredibly strong for Junkrat. Uh, yes, hold hotel. Uh, hotel is just Junkrat's uh, everything. It, it's um. It's a super closed in area. They have to come through a choke even when they leave. So if you back out of hotel, they got to pick left or right and it's still a small little doorway. So you kind of get two chances to attack them. Uh, and if they do sit in there, you can attack through either the doorway with ricochet shots and you lock down that side. Holding that flank just makes your support's life a lot easier. You'll see in a lot of games, people will very quickly jump through hotel and get a support pick. Uh, your job is to make that just an utter hell for anyone trying to get through there. Now, once hotel is locked down, you can either back up a little bit and then shoot on the main point, like over your Reinhardt shield or, you know, towards the enemy, like near statue. Or if the enemy team rotates a little bit too much, you can actually go through hotel with like, a, a, as they rotate, you rotate on them and then you'll get behind them. And as, as we know, Junkrat has incredible burst damage. So if anyone's back there, you know, it, it usually can uh, lead to a kill. That goes on nicely to the next tip where Dr Junkrat has a lot of damage potential, but one of his major weaknesses is confirming those kills. I just wondered if you had a tip when it came to using some of the abilities together to make sure that you can instantly burst down any DPS, any healers that are low. How would you go about that? What are you trying to do? What kind of abilities are you going to use in that scenario? Yeah, Junkrat with the second concussive mine, his kill confirmation went through the roof. And I'm not talking about using two concussive mines at once. Uh, that's a bit expensive on the resources. But uh, the main combos I would always say is trap. Whenever you push up, use a trap, uh, including if you feel like you need to be aggressive and you concussive mine either towards the enemy or anything. Whenever you're at the apex of that jump, you want to throw down a trap. And a lot of the times when you land, uh, the trap has probably caught someone by the time you landed. At that point, you can just pop them once if it's a 200 point class and they're going to be taking the full 200 damage and they'll, you know, die right off. Or as you land, um, people call it assassin rat more, more often than not. And that's just when you know, when you know you've landed a hit. And I think most players, when you know, you, you'll see that shot, you instantly throw a concussive mine so that the, you get the full 240 damage and you kind of just burst down almost anyone. Uh, the only exception to these obviously are the tanks, but remember, Bursting down a tank, uh, if you hit them three times, it's 360 damage. Uh, most tanks are 25 to half health, and you can just go from there. It really does, even these small bursts, even if you don't get a kill confirmation, will either A, disrupt the enemy formation, or, or B, just make them so weak that your team can take advantage of it. Well, mm -hmm. kill confirmation is extremely important. Remember, if everyone has health, half health coming into, the, into a fight, you, you've done your job. They have a lot to, to make up for. Uh, and if your team takes advantage of that, it's really great. Uh, you said before about double concussive mining and sort of being a bit expensive on the resources. I think that's quite a common mistake that a lot of drug crats may sort of use. But like, what tips would you give when it comes to preserving resources and how important it is for drug crats game style? 
It's very important. And I would say that because uh, a Junkrat without any resources, so without Trap or Concussive Mines, uh, you are very vulnerable to almost any flanker. I would say any hero in the game, but most importantly, the flankers. Like what you use to keep Genjis and Tracers at bay is that Concussive Mine. It's that threat of, hey, if you come near me, I'm going to do 120 damage to you. Oh, if you keep on coming at me, I got another 120 damage waiting in my back pocket. Uh, but Junkrat is good at closed in areas. So what happens if you use one concussive mine? What it's going to do is going to throw them right against the wall, and that either lines up a you know a normal shot, so you can save that concussive mine, or it's a very very easy second concussive mine. And again, I reserve that for high priority targets, so like a soldier alting, um, a McCree that's on my supports, or something that like I need to get out of the way, so that my team has a safe you know way to go forward. I, I use it to remove variables instantly but i try to reserve that now the buff to junkrat's like double concussive mine meant that his fighting range is a little bit more dynamic he doesn't need to sit right at the back anymore he can fight a little bit further forward so if stuff starts to go south he can sort of jump out of there with the extra concussive mine that he has have you got any tips and advice when it comes to fighting rangers junkrat where should you be where's the best position to fight certain heroes and generally how should you go about positioning yourself now that you have a little bit more freedom with movement so yeah, the the increase in movement I think for the way I play Junkrat is the most important buff with the double concuss. And so you can either get in or out of combat and have a concuss of you know ready and waiting for you. Or if you use one to finish someone off, you can use it to get your get away. As for the the ranges, I will straight up just say the most important thing is either you need to be a by cover or B, stay away from mid range. Uh, mid range is Junkrat's weakest range by a long shot. It's essentially from short to mid-range is when people can actively dodge, right? When the grenade's in the air for two seconds, and if someone's paying attention, they can dodge every single shot. Uh, concussive Mine isn't as fast as people think. You can That can be dodged as well, even though the AoE is a bit bigger, and you know you control the detonation. So staying at mid-range is, I would avoid, unless you have strong cover. So if you're next to a corner or a choke point, something like that where you have an, you know, an inherent advantage with the map. If you get point blank with someone, short range can work, but remember you are a bit of a glass cannon. You can get shot down very quickly, basically immediately. As a backliner, I can shoot the enemy team's backlines with no commitment, with no resource usage, with no worry. And what this does is it forces out resources from the enemy team. Uh, if you're on defense, it forces out their you know resources early. They have to use bionic grenades. They have to use tools. They have to, you know they do get some obviously some all charge from the damage. But they're coming into the battle without resources and you strip them away virtually free of charge. And lastly, we haven't really spoken about the tire and you wanted to put an emphasis on how important the rip tire is now, especially with New Mercy being able to res certain targets. But yes, with the New Mercy changes, I was a very big advocate of solo kills with tire. I'm like, get a kill, make it a 5v6, and then start playing Overwatch again, right? You're not playing Gran Turismo. Like, Stop driving a tire around, get a kill, and, and get get playing again. But with the new Mercy Alt, uh, or Mercy Res, we're at an issue where if you use Tyra to get a solo kill, she's just gonna res them. And it's, since you're not out there to follow up on the kill, like if the you know baiting the Mercy out or anything, it, it's almost it's useless. In the past couple days that I've been playing, I've actually been hunting Mercies down with the tire. And I think that is actually a very good use of it now. Uh, so one of the important things about Junkrat's tires is knowing the timings. Try to get a pick before combat or to, if you're attacking, let's say King of the Hill or any other attack map, you're trying to break the defense and you're trying to give your team an opening. Mm -hmm. So we start wanting, wanting to use tire maybe mid fight. Uh, if you see an opening, uh, your idea is, is once combat starts, then the supports kind of have to show their hand. And as soon as you're past a choke point or the, the, the initial stage of combat, like you're you're past the poke phase of combat, people have gotten through a choke point and you're on to like, you're looking for kills. And you can either use it to A, even up the numbers, or to try to find a specific target to hunt them out and kill them. Um, since the supports are coming out to help their team, you can more easily find them. Uh, they're usually an easier spot to get to. Uh, or any slow heroes that are just trying to get back with their team. Like you can just chase their little butt down and you, you can detonate it and stagger them for another 10, 15 seconds, which gives you the point. So there's a good amount of tips to certainly make use of the new Junkrat. Where can viewers find more from you, both when it comes to sort of guides on how to play Junkrat, but also to watch you play him yourself? Uh, yeah, so you can find me on Twitch TV slash Pro Light Crow. And then I have a YouTube 
uh, channel, uh, you know, Pro Like Crow. Uh, I go over some pro games and whatnot, uh, usually a bit in depth, like... And that's it for this time, thank you very much for watching, do let us know again what heroes you would like us to cover, whether they've been changed recently or not, but also let us know what players you would like us to talk to about said heroes in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you want to keep this series up, and until next time, take care, we'll see you then.